Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to use the eth tool command. So uh, let's jump right into it. And you're going to notice that it's not installed. Now we're running Ubuntu at the at the moment, and it basically tells us right here. We can just run sudo apt install eth tool. Now um, I'm going to run sudo apt update first, just to update my repo info. Now, th this is almost the same thing to install this on. Um, all right, so now that we have that there, I'm going to uh, just run install eth tool. Now, uh, this didn't come installed by default. Um, yeah, so you, you, you can use apt to install this. This is the, it. you can use similar commands on other distros like, like Pac-Man on Arch Linux or what, whatever uh, package manager your distro uses. The package may, name may vary. But uh, in any case, um, there we go. We've installed it. Now we, we can try running it like this. And you'll, you'll see uh, without any options, it, it doesn't really do anything. So let, let's um, run it with an interface. But first, we're going to have to check which interfaces we have on this system. So I'm going to use the IPA command. And you notice um, we have a Wi-Fi interface, but on my currently plugged in Ethernet interface is ENO2 and LO is the local loopback, so we're gonna check ENO2. So, <clears throat> we're gonna run eth tool ENO2. And there we go. We get some information for this interface. So, um, yeah, so we, we can see some details about it, like supported pause frame use, um, auto negotiation, so it supports auto negotiation, so it will ne negotiate with the switch what your speeds should be. Um, and whether it's going to be full duplex or, or half duplex, stuff like that. It has a bunch of other information. Now, the real important things that I generally look for are going to be speed and duplex. Now, you'll notice that the speed of this interface is 100 megabits, and the duplex is full, du meaning you can send information back and forth, which is generally what you should be able to do with basically any e Ethernet interface that you have um, set up. Uh, any case, I've never seen one that unless something's wrong, like a cable, one of the part of the cable is broken or something, you should always see full duplex as, as far as I know from everything I've seen. But um, the speed is actually kind of slow. We're actually connected to a gigabit switch. So I believe there's something wrong with the cable. So this is going to be a good example. I'm going to go swap the cable and see if we can get this, this to uh, show up as a gigabit connection. All right, so I haven't replaced the cable. I was actually able to just reseat the cable, and it looks like my switch is indicating that uh, that I do have um, a full gigabit connection now. So let's let's verify this with eth tool. So I'm going to run the same command again, eth tool, and you'll see I have speed gigabit, so uh, thousand megabits a second full duplex. This is what we expect from a gigabit switch. So if you see that set to 100, something's wrong. And in my, in my case, I actually saw a little orange light on my switch. I actually didn't catch that on video. I probably should have. Um, would have made for a better video. In any case, it's a, a, a green blinking light now, so it's working fine. I actually probably do have to replace that network cable um, because the little uh, little clip that keep, holds it in place in the, in the back of my PC is actually broken off. So I'm going to probably replace that cable. But in um, any case, for now, it looks like just reseating it fixed the problem. So yeah, you could have a broken... Um, you know, one, one of the wires inside the cable could be broken or, or loose or something, or, or maybe the, the cable isn't plugged in um, snugly. So, so anything like that could cause a problem like that. So this is good to be able to check things like that if you're having network issues. So this is a great, um, great tool for troubleshooting network issues and just actually knowing what's going on with your physical interface. Now, let, let's, let's try this again with sudo. Now, notice the output is slightly different. Now, this is because we ran the command with root permissions. Now, notice if you scroll up, uh, but when I ran the command before, it says netlink error operation not permitted. So it was not able to do something. Um, let's see. So that was right after MDIX and before current message level. Let's see here. So it, I believe it wasn't able to get 
this and for these two lines of information wake on and supports wake on so uh, we weren't able to get any information about that but most of the rest of this information we were able to uh, we were able to see so uh, yeah it mostly you know what what we can see here is that eth tool works it, it pretty much works fine without root permissions but if you have but uh, some things may or may not work. Your mileage may vary, so uh, you're better off running it with root permissions if you can. Now, I, the other things I'd like to point out with the ETH tool command are um, that it, it tells you like the supported link modes. So you you could set it to like uh, you know 10 base T or 100 base T or 1,000 base T, 1,000 base T being gigabit, which is what we have it at now, and 100 being uh, what what we uh, what it was showing up as before. Now it could be like half duplex or full duplex. That's what those, so basically these are all the different modes. You can have 10, 100, 1,000 in either half or full. Actually, a uh, gigabit has to be full duplex. So it looks like we can't have half duplex and gigabit. Any case, um, let's see what else. Advertised link modes. So I guess it advertises that uh, we, we can uh, we we can use any of these link modes. And if my switch happened to want happened to want to work with any one of these. Like if I had a switch, a really old switch that only does 10 base T, um, it, it would be able to negotiate. My interface would be able to negotiate to use uh, this speed, or or it could negotiate for this speed or this speed, whatever the you know the highest and best uh, mode is that both devices have. They will negotiate and pick that. So yeah, and it says it it used advertised auto negotiation. Yes. So basically, my uh, my uh, Nick on my on my PC um, negotiated with the switch that I'm plugged into. So that's basically how that happened. And in here it tells us, you know, the port is twisted pair. This is just ethernet. It means um, twisted pairs of wires that go through an ethernet cable. That's what that's referring to. It's the, the type of cabling. Now, another thing I'd like to point out before I forget is that there's another tool called me tool and I'll still see this referenced in a lot of places, but it's a much older tool that's been deprecated for many years now. And it basically uh, serves a similar role to ETH tool. But um, I would recommend using ETH tool these days because it's um, kind of the modern, I guess the modern replacement. But, um, but yeah, use ETH tool as it's not deprecated, at least at the moment. <clears throat> and I, don't believe it's going to be deprecated anytime soon, but you know anything can happen in the Linux world. So, any case, yeah, just be aware that there is another tool called Me Tool. I, I might do another video about that tool, but it is you can still use it. You can still install it these days, but it is deprecated. It's an older tool and not considered to be as good as ETH Tool. So, ETH Tool is the preferred tool for this job. So, one neat thing you can do, kind of a neat trick with ETH Tool is use the dash p flag and this will cause the interface to blink so you, you can actually explicitly tell the inter the light on the interface to start blinking now we, we can do this like this um let's see what was our interface name a is eno2 all right so eth tool dash p eno2 and hit enter oops and th this you actually do need sudo for and there we go. Now, until we hit Control C, the the interface is just going to keep blinking, like you see here. So hit Control C to stop that. Now, um, you you could also specify a time limit. So you you could use that same command. And if you wanted it to blink for only five seconds, you could put a five there. And now it's gonna it's gonna start blinking on the back for five seconds. And after five seconds, it's gonna stop. Now um, you could also like if you wanted it to go for a minute, or you could do like sixty seconds, obviously, or you could do like hundred twenty for two minutes if you wanted to stop blinking automatically. And you just wanna this is great for if you want to identify an inter interface on the back of a system that has multiple ports. So if, say if you had four NICs on a system, usually the case with a server or something. Um, yeah, a, a lot of servers I've worked with have four ports on the back. A lot of them these days only have two. Some only have one. Um, most desktops are only going to have one one Ethernet port. But in any case, if you want to identify a port, um, this is great to just make the port that you're specifying blank. So any case, so that that, that was kind of a neat tool or, or, or a neat tip that you can use with this tool. 
Now, another thing I wanted to show you with ETH tool is the, the dash I is, um, oops, yeah, ETH tool dash I to uh, just give you uh, driver info. So, you know, two and just run this. And there we go. We just get info about the, the driver. Now, uh, another common thing you might want to use is a dash A. And this gives us auto negotiation and, you know, receive transmit information. All right. So anyways, uh, let's see what else you used uh, dash S for stats. And um, yeah, we're not seeing anything interesting for that. All right. Any case, moving along here, look, there's another interesting thing you could do. You can um, turn off auto negotiation. So no, notice here we have auto negotiation on. You, you, you could actually turn this off. So you, you, you can say um, dash S and you can say auto, auto neg off. Now you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see auto negotiation is turned, it, it didn't get turned off. Okay, well it's, it's supposed to be turned off. Um, for whatever reason, it, it looks like it's still turned on. So that's some interesting behavior there. It looks like we aren't advertising link modes though. So we have supported link modes, but no advertised link modes. And it still says auto negotiation on. So any case, um, <clears throat> it, it's also saying speed in duplex unknown. So unless we set the speed in duplex, I, I'm not sure how this is gonna behave. So let, let's see here. I'm, I'm actually kind of curious if I can reach the internet. Yeah, so I still have connectivity. Now, um, let's see, we can actually set the speeds explicitly. So auto negotiation off, and we can say speed 100. We can set the speed 100. And now when we run ETH tool, all right, it's still saying unknown. So that, that's some interesting behavior. And I, I, I wasn't actually expecting this. Now, I, I can't think of any real reasons why you would want to do this because it's usually going to, uh, you know, it's, it's usually going to ne negotiate to uh, the highest speed available. So I, I've never had a situation where you'd need to do this. So I'm kind of just showing you how you can do this if you wanted to. Um, oops. But, uh, but yeah, we should be able to if we want to. I, I've, I've never attempted to do this before. But for, for whatever reason, you know, maybe we have to IF down and IF up the interface. All right, so take the interface down and let's see here. Let, let's bring the interface up again. All right, so there we go. It's still unknown. Link detected no, all right. So let, let, let's try this. Let's take the interface down. Oops. And let's bring the interface back up. Let, let's check it and then let's bring it back up. So still saying unknown. And there we go, let's bring it up and let's just check it again. Okay, so still unknown. I'm, I'm really not sure why it's behaving like this, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and set it back.
I'm going to turn auto negotiation back on. There we go. And bring it up. And there we go. So we're back to gigabit and uh, full duplex. So yeah, we, we fixed it. So, um, and now we notice we have our, not only our supported link modes, but our advertised link modes. Now, um, I can't think of a, a real practical reason to ever want to do that, but um, I'm actually kind of surprised as to why we weren't able to um, explicitly set the speed in duplex. So I think that's probably going to be, uh, it's probably going to be a great idea for a, a follow-up video. So I might do another video about ETH tool and uh, maybe we'll explore this. Um, I'd, I'd like to go a little bit deeper with ETH tool. And I would, I, there are a ton of other parameters. Like if you check the man page for ETH tool, there are, there are a ton of other options. You see there's, there's you, you can like dump the EEPROM, check registers, but you can check like ring buffers and things like that. So there's, there's a lot you can do with ETH tool. So I may do a, you know, a deep dive video where I explore some of these issues and um, go through basically every single parameter there is. So that's something I'm kind of thinking about in the future. But for now, I think this is all we want to cover with ETH tool for today. So, you know, hopefully you found, hopefully someone found this video useful. Um, if not, maybe just interesting, um, seeing some of the things you can do with ETH tool. And if you know something that I don't know, especially, um, you know why I why this didn't work for me. Um, just leave a comment down below. I'm I'm going to probably look into this myself. But yeah, if if you happen to know the answer to that, leave a comment down below. Do, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video. But definitely, we want to know anything you have to say. Any any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, do leave a comment down below. You might want to give me a thumbs up for this video, but uh, also hit the subscribe button because we have a lot of other great content coming up. You're not going to want to miss. You know, we, we cover a lot of Linux stuff, a lot of server stuff. We cover coding, scripting, automation, um, Raspberry Pis, electronics, robots, 3D printing, networking, all sorts of stuff like that. So you're not going to want to miss out on this stuff. You're going to want your YouTube feed to show all this, this great content. Um, we have a lot of great stuff coming down the tube that you're not going to want to miss out on. So definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube's not going to really let you know when we come out with new videos. And that is pretty much it for today. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.